The second uh, talk will be given online. Can everyone hear me? Yes, but we don't see the slides yet. Oh, yeah. Let me start. You have um, to share them, yes. Yes, here is the slides and let's go. Okay, now it's good? Yeah, it's working. Okay. Okay, so the second presentation is a novel completeness test for leakage models and its application to side channel attacks and resp uh, responsibly engineered simulators. It's by Sigao and Elizabeth Oswald, and the presentation will be given by Sigao. Floor right. is yours. Thanks for the. Okay, thanks. Um, brilliant. So, uh, thanks for everyone helping me to set this up, and uh, thanks for coming to my talk. My name is Sigao. Um, Today I'm going to talk about, within this talk, I'm going to talk about how you can construct complete leakage models and how does it apply to set channel attacks and responsibly engineer simulators. So this is my joint work with Elizabeth. Um, I now work for Huawei now, but this work was entirely done last year when I was working in the University of Klagenfurt, Austria, where I was funded by an ERC funding called SEAL. Okay, so I guess most of our, our audience are already familiar with the concept of set channel analysis. So set channel analysis take advantage of your information leakage, whether it's timing, power consumption, et cetera, and then potentially can recover the secret key in a really short time at the cost of taking some additional physical observations, for example, your power consumption on some oscilloscope. And let's take a systematic, systematic point of view. Let's consider like, as an attacker, as a set channel attacker, what you have to do. So of course you need to have this device running the code and take this um, oscilloscope to measuring perhaps your power consumption. Of course, that's always the same, but as the attacker, you, the first thing you need to assume is what's the target intermediate states I'm targeting. Uh, for example, uh, for normal Hamming weight correlation attacks, I might assume I'm attacking the first round, the first FBOS output. So then the target states is the Xbox output. The, the other thing I need to assume on is how the state is leaking. So perhaps I will assume the leakage, the leakage I'm observing on the trace approximates the hemming weight of the states. So um, put it all together, I need to assume that my observed leakage approximates the hemming weight of the Xbox output, maybe plus with some additional Gaussian noise. And what happens later on is with some key guesses, KJ here, I will compute my assumed leakage and compare that with the observed leakage with the Pearson correlation coefficients. So if it's non-zero, it's a large number. Perhaps I got the right key guess. If it's close to zero, maybe I got the wrong key guess. Um, of course, there is a key enumeration process here. So this X in general couldn't be too large. So if this key guess is like 128 bits, of course, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, but one thing we need to keep in mind is from anything you observe on the trace, you never know what's the full leakage model, what 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 does it all like um, entirely contains, all the information it contains, we never know. So we have su maybe successfully attack it with the Xbox output, then we know it does contain the information about it, this Xbox output, but you cannot never say like this is everything you have on the trace. So let's now assume we um, take maybe a God view. Let's say like we know for sure this, is ha this has the Xbox output, but it also has some Xbox output leakage um, as, the bit bit as the transition from this Xbox with the previous Xbox. This is actually quite common for software platforms like this. In this case, you might have this kind of leakage from the memory subsystem, uh, maybe on your memory bus, there is this transition and they will be leaking. Or you might have it in some microarchitecture registers or buses, you might also see this kind of um, transition leakage. It's actually quite common. But the thing is, you don't really know because it lies in whether it's the memory or the microarchitecture as the code designer, there's no way you will know this for beforehand. So does this really have any impact? As an attacker, I don't really care too much about this because, well, although um, having this might help you develop some, somewhere a better attack, as the attacker, my final goal is recovering my secret key. So um, the complexity of finding this term will be added to the final complexity um, towards the key. So actually, in most cases, finding this term, it might take much more effort than actually just doing this simple attack and get the secret key. 
So as a attacker, I don't really care about whether I'm missing this term or not. But if we jump into the evaluator or certification labs shoes, the story is completely different. Um, from evaluation point of view, we really want to verify whether our masking schemes or our masking uh, or our countermeasures are secure against all the leakage I observe. Of course, in this case, if I assume the leakage is solely about the Xbox output, but the reality is there is this additional term, which is not really about the Xbox output, then that perhaps your um, countermeasures is only secure against this term, but not this term. So it's only like partly effective, which is of, of course not something desirable. So we propose and clarify in this paper that leakage model should contain both the intermediate state X, aka the Xbox output here and your leakage function, aka the Hemming weight assumption here. So uh, you don't really have to agree with me on this terminology. If you assume leakage model is solely about L, that's okay. But still, as an attacker, you do need to consider both of them. And there are there are a few solutions for L. So if, if you don't like Hemming weight, you can try profiling. You can also try maybe uh, doing mutual information. There are other options here. But for the state X, that's what we are going to emphasize in this talk. And we're going to propose something called a completeness tag. We call something if a selected set of states is complete, if it actually contains all the relevant states for an observed leakage on the trace. And we're going to propose using the F test to verify whether your selected state um, is actually complete or not. Or if it's not complete, it means a fail to express some of the leakage you can observe on the trace. So to ha having this complete model will have a few benefits. Uh, for, for example, for attacks, it might review some unexpected new attack vectors, or for leakage simulators, it might help you to find leaks that would be otherwise missed by oversimpli overly simplified models, such as the Hemingway model. And let's now start our journey. Uh, how can we find a complete set of intermediate states? So this is going to be our roadmap here. The first step, what, what we are trying to do is com construct this complete model that captures all the data dependent leakage. And then, um, well, of course, with the realistic measurement, we are going to estimate this full model, what it looks like. And then we are going to take your assumption, perhaps the as leakage solely about this as box output. And then we'll also take the, um, measurements and construct a model for the assumed model. And then later on in the second step, we're going to compare this model, these two models and figuring out whether we are missing something. So if this model is significantly better than this one, then that might suggest we are missing something, which means your model is not really complete. In other words, if, well, on the other hand, if you got something complete, that means your model is complete, you're not missing something up to the statistic power you are using, or in other words, the provided number of traces. Okay, so let's take a look at how we do the first step, how to construct a model that can capture all the data dependency. So um, at the first glance, this might seem like mission impossible because it's like capturing all the leakage. What is all the leakage? But if you really think about it for an unmasked AES, if we assume the uh, the secret key is, a, is some constant, then all the intermediate states, wherever it is, whatever, wherever it lies in, whatever it is, it will always be a deterministic function of all the input bits. On the other, um, as a consequence of the um, leakage you are gonna observe during the encryption, whether it's a transition leakage, whether it's leech related leakage, it will also be function of all the input bits. That means if we can actually construct this model with all the input bits, it will capture all the data dependency during the encryption. But the problem is there's no way you can work with this model because it requires much more than two to the 128 um, traces to actually work with. So we have to um, bind it into a much smaller space. Our tricks here is trying to um, bind each byte into one bit. So we're using one random bit to represent each input byte for AES. Um, in that case, we kind of bind it um, each byte into only one bit. So entirely, if there are like for AES 120, 128, there are 16, 16 bytes, which means we only need to, to, uh, two to the 16 traces, um, a bit more than two to the 16 traces to work with. This is much more desirable. 
And then uh, the second step, if we have a complete model like this and we have our assumed model only about the Xbox output, then the next step is how we compare them. Luckily, in this case, we have some well-established techniques in statistics called the F-test for analysis of the variance. So in the F-test, we can uh, compare this two with some, uh, if the F statistic in the end is larger than some threshold, then we say this model you are assuming in actually misses some factor that has significant contribution to the observed leakage. Otherwise, we say it's complete up to the statistic power, which in the end um, depends on the number of traces you are providing. Okay, so put it together. The first step, we construct a full model and assume model, and then using the realist traces to uh, construct both models, and then we compare it in the app test. So the F-test will tell us whether your assumed model is not complete or in other words, it's missing something. Of course, it will now tell you what it's missing. It will just tell you it was missing something. Um, go back to our previous case. In, if we still using our trivial example here, it will of course be rejected because you are missing this heavy distance term. Okay, so now let's take a look at, at a few more complicated applications. So first of all, how it works in a text. Um, so I said, first of all, I said this is for attacks, but it doesn't necessarily mean we are standing on the uh, position of attackers. So if we take a look at our previous example with the Heming, uh, with the Heming weight of the S-Boss output and the distance between these two S-Boss outputs, do we, as the attacker, do we really want this term? Uh, so as I said previously, probably not, because finding this term takes intensive effort and that effort will count it to your final uh, complexity towards your secret key. The other reason I might not want this is this term actually have two relevant key bytes. So to attack this term, you need to enumerate uh, two key bytes versus with the um, single Xbox output, you only need one key byte, which means in the end, the um, advantage of adding this term into your attack is almost negligible but the effort to find it is quite large. So in the end, you might, as the attacker, you might not really want to add in this term to your attack. But what is really critical here is we we were wishing uh, we are wishing to using this attack using this analysis to review some unexpected microarchitecture features, which in the end help us to develop a deeper understanding of our platform which will also benefit all the coding and uh, masking implementations in this specific platform. Um, of course, this will also means in the following, I'm not really talking about everything in an attack setup. I assume everything was in a profiling setup where we assume all the input we know about it. We are only trying to training, um, trying to train a better model for future attacks. Okay, so the target I'm selecting is from NC, the fine masking schemes. You can find it in this repository. So in this schemes, every secret by X is encoded with an one multiplicated mask RM and one additional mask RA. So the SBOS will be pre-computed pre um, before each encryption with the input mask R in the output marks are out. So later on in the, within this encryption, you will always um, do table lookups here. And the additional marks RA will be different for each byte, but R and R in the out will be shared within one encryption. So within this um, implementation, that's focused on the traces where we uh, timingly calculate the first SBOS, first masked SBOS table lookup. Um, well, if we trivially build the leakage model for it, we assume while we are looking table lookup for the first bytes, then we might leak um, X0, the two unshared um, unmasked states for the first bytes, and Rn, R80, and maybe also R in and R out. So that's all the um, well states relevant for computing the first Xbox lookup. But if we actually using this as our assumed model and compare that with the full model, what we got is the blue line here. So basically in this graph, everything above the dash line means you are not complete, you are missing something. So that means um, even if we are only timingly actually computing this first SBOS byte, the first byte SBOS lookup, the leakage is not solely about the first SBOS. And why is that? What is the missing leakage here? So if we consider the target 
core, uh, the Cortex M3 we are using here is actually a 32 bit core, which means your memory buses are most likely also 32 bits. Even if your code is only trying to load one byte from the memory, um, it, what is likely to happen is your memory is always loading a word and it is the CPU's responsibility for um, picking out which bytes you want and discarding all the unnecessary bytes. So this would mean on your leakage, you are actually observing the leakage from the word-wise loading instead of the byte-wise loading. So if we add all of those into our consideration, our, um, we can get the sign line here, which is right um, below the threshold, which says, suggests this might be a complete model. Okay, let's further verify if this is actually the case. Um, here I presented the um, well uh, the analysis of all four first four bytes within this word, and as we can see here, all the musket um box, the musket states, all the first four as uh, musket states can be observed as a peak here. So which suggests all four of them, although timingly you are only doing. Um, table lookup for the first bytes, you actually observe all the four bytes leakage simultaneously here. So what does this mean for attack? Well, previously, if you want the leakage for X, one byte XI and one, one byte XJ, you might be looking for two different points on the trace. And for this case, we actually know if we select some, something here, it simultaneously has the, um, the leakage for all four bytes within this, this words, which means if you I want x y x zero and x one, I can just pick one sample here and then take the second statistic moment. So that will give me simultaneously um, two points leakage. So that means if you're doing second order attack, you can do univariate attack instead of bivariate attacks, which means you don't really have to combine um, noises from different sources. Um, more details will be presented in paper. I will skip it for now, but I would also like to emphasize this is very far from the most um, efficient or most uh, powerful attacks. Of course, the most powerful attacks are always prevailing attacks. Uh, but here, what we would like to um, state it is um, using our, our analysis, you can review some new attack factors, vectors, and you can also learn what is previously unexpected in your analysis. Okay, so the next application I'm going to talk about is leakage simulators. So uh, previously, if you were talking, uh, if you're thinking about how we actually work with um, certification um, process, is you as a crypto engineer, you find some masking scheme, you code it, and you deploy that into your device, and then you send to certification center, which do this leakage detection, finding out whether it's secure or not, and then if it's secure, you can send it to the market. Otherwise, you might go back. So the non-ideal part of this is um, basically at this point, you might already finish your development cycle. So in companies, this means you might already finish this uh, where if the certification center said, well, it's not secure, you need to fix it. Maybe this is already a year after you actually divide the list. You might already forgot what um, causes this or your colleague might already leaving their job, which means really difficult to actually reworking on it. Um, so one of the um, solution for this will be use the leakage simulators here. So leakage simulator can provide you some feedback right after you write your code, then you can run on leakage simulators and then you can um, have some, well, idea of whether my implementation is right or there is something wrong. The other uh, good thing about leakage simulator is, well, they are fully theoretical. So they not only tell you through leakage detection which instruction is leaking, they will also tell you exactly why they're leaking, which helps you to de develop much more targeted se uh, security patches. So one important point of this um, schedule, this workflow is you, quality. Sorry. Hello? Uh, Hello? Your time is almost up. Can you please uh, okay. conclude this talk, please? Okay. Okay. Um, so um, I'm just going to say the complete test will help you um, to verify the quality of your leakage simulator. And we are going to uh, verify two existing simulators. And what you um, this is the garbage we're using, and what we observe here is it's actually quite far from uh, what we want. So everything, almost every cycle, is not ideal. So um, we have constructed something better, uh, and this the 
um, non-complete leakage load actually causes some problems in your leakage detection. You can see here, you actually fails to detect many of the leakage here. Okay, so um, um, I might, I think maybe I can skip the um, ethical consideration here. So um, um, with this model, we are not asking making this, so which may also um, avoid the problem of cost of using this leakage simulator sets great templates. So that's the uh, ethical part. Okay, that's the end of this talk. Thank you. Right. Uh, maybe we can keep the questions for the after the second talk because the second talk okay, will be yeah, given right. only by uh, also by the same speakers. So maybe you can yeah. simply continue with the second talk and then at the end we can uh, have a few minutes. Yeah, sure.